I want to go right to uh, former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, our Senior Counsel for Global Affairs, because we haven't had a chance to talk to him yet uh, on the broadcast, and it's got a new piece up at ACLJ.org as well. The piece is, is titled uh, "Attorney General Garland's Raid on Mar-a-Lago is a lot is about more than documents." So, Secretary Pompeo, we've had heard lots of different people's opinion on this, but I want to hear yours on what you think this is all about at the end of the day. Well, Jordan, thanks uh, for giving me the chance to walk everyone through this. It, you know, the, the left keeps talking about no one's above the law. That's a true statement. But this has all the hallmarks of a, a political action. And our history has been very different from that. Now, when I was on the Benghazi committee, we had a former secretary of state who clearly had classified information on her server. We didn't we didn't ask the Justice Department to raid her home. We, we didn't send agents in to seize it. We began a conversation about how to make sure we protected the information and delivered against the constitutional processes that we all know. Um, there's been none of that. And, and Jordan, this all, too, comes across a backdrop. And this is why this is bigger than about any one individual, including even President Trump. We've watched Peter Strozik. We watched him go after with the Russia hoax. We watched former Director Comey and, and former Deputy Director McCabe. We, we, we know they lied. Uh, we've watched the FBI behave in ways that are deeply political, and they do a disservice not only to uh, the people whose actions are, are on the other end, the receiving end of them, but they also do an enormous disservice to the FBI agents in the field who are trying to uh, keep people safe, to run, to keep drugs off our streets, all those things. This is when the political leadership of the FBI behaves in ways that are inconsistent with our constitutional foundation. It puts so much at risk, Jordan. That's what I was going to tell you. Because it feels like to a lot of conservatives, uh, Secretary Pompeo, that this is like the, it's been weaponized to a point where it's like a hit squad for the Democrats, and that's how they're utilizing it. I, I would, feel, I'm sure that there's plenty of agents out there who feel frustrated, but we also have seen congressional reports uh, from uh, whistleblowers who have said they're being purged, that people that have uh, conservative views. So I, it, it just it feels. That way, I mean, to, to talk through the to the American people, because the CIA director working with the FBI and on the Benghazi committee when you're in the House, that's that's how it feels to folks out there is that this leadership uh, cannot be trusted right now. Well, I, I saw, so Director Comey was the director of the FBI when I became CIA director, so he was in office. I watched what he did in the opening month with the, uh, uh, the Russia report that they did. They, they knew the dossier was uh, not something that they wanted to rest on, but they used that as a, a linchpin to leapfrog and conduct all kinds of two years of horrors against the administration. Uh, this, this is your, your point's exactly right. There are there are rank and file members of the FBI who I know are frustrated who see this leadership behaving in ways uh, that are inconsistent with their value set of just the facts, and just the law, and uh, it puts enormous risk to our country, to have its federal law enforcement agency uh, faking data that goes to uh, the FISA team, an important process that FISA process, right? We, we, saw, we saw this when uh, they began to use the IRS in ways that are political. This is the Merrick Garland, the attorney general, has given the American people no reason to believe that he is running a straight-up organization. He ought to go out and speak to the American people about why he did what he did and lay out his case for why it was so important, so urgent, that they had to go uh, bust into the former president's home and raid these documents. I, you know, I was going to ask you about that because it's, as being the former director of the CIA, you know, this classified document, is there some risk to America with the paper that's out there? Would that usually take two years to figure out? <laughs> it doesn't seem so. All, all the all the things indicate, right? I, I've actually read, I don't know this, that they actually received permission to uh, conduct the search on a Thursday or Friday and didn't yep. do the raid for another 72 hours. Okay, explain that. Uh, I, I'm open to hearing a rational explanation for this, but there has been none. And against the backdrop of all that has been done, all of the uh, misstatements, all the lies, all the improper use of these law enforcement tools, of intelligence collection tools by political leadership, uh, starting back with uh, Clapper and Brennan and Comey, Attorney General Garland is not going to get the benefit of the doubt on this. He needs to explain to the American people what was so darn urgent, what presented national security risk that they had to do something that's never been done before. Use the FBI against the former president of the United States and invade his place of residence. 
Yeah, but they they wanted to take their weekend still. They still wanted their Saturday and Sunday, uh, which is it's just very bizarre. Every every national security attorney's weighed in on this from DOJ or former DOJ's. So you know, if you got that search warrant, of someone like this kind of profile, they don't even have an example to use because this is unprecedented. You execute it immediately because if you believe that this is a threat to our national security, you don't wait the weekend. You don't hold on to the weekend, and you you, know, you go. So again, none of it, and it's not like they've tried to put out, as you said, Secretary Pompeo. They have not tried to put out an explanation. They have not tried to say this is why we had to wait, you know, seventy-two hours. That, that's not the. There's no legal requirement for that. The legal, you get the search warrant, you can execute it, but that is not what they decided to do. Which again, it just puts makes people think this is not on the up and up. Uh, they've been lied to by former FBI directors, and it's like what's going on now with the DOJ. I do want to go to the Inflation Reduction Act as well. Uh, because we're getting honest reports now, even from Senator Manchin, that it, it has nothing to do with inflation and this kind of recalculating what it's all about. But we also have seen Secretary Pompeo is social media companies starting to flag people for saying there's going to be new IRS agents uh, coming to your door because they're saying, well, some will be uh, replacements. Well, I, I think everyone understands that there are retirements that these federal agencies and people eventually do leave. Uh, but ultimately here... Uh, you've been through it with the, the targeting, and we've been through it with the targeting of Tea Party groups. How big of a risk do you think it is that when when they take, when they go increase in size, to 80 plus thousand new agents, and they're recruiting them right from college campuses as we speak, and they've t given them the job of finding new money? Two things we know for sure. Uh, the first is, is that 87,000 new agents are what is authorized, and there'll be some retired. They'll replace that one, too. Uh, the chance that they're actually going to avoid small businesses and people making less than $400,000 to still achieve the outcome that they said they were going to achieve is, is, is as fraudulent as the title of the legislation saying it was actually going to reduce inflation. Second, we've lost such confidence in the capacity of the Internal Revenue Service to do its job. This is what the ACLJ just did such great work on, right, with Lois Lerner chasing her down and proving to the American people that she was behaving in ways that were deeply inconsistent with just making sure that everybody who paid taxes didn't matter if you were a liberal conservative. No, she used it to weaponize the IRS against conservatives. If, if you're going to double the size of the IRS, 87,000 new IRS agents, uh, it is, seems like the American people know that this will end up hurting small businesses and ordinary families and may well end up as a political tool. There's no need for it. It was a, a poor decision, and I so regret that we didn't have a 54 senator to prevent this from happening. Yeah, I mean, that's all I would have taken. But it's, I think important in the midterms, we know, seeing the polling, is that if you tell people Inflation Reduction Act and that's where they take it, they think that's wonderful because it sounds nice. But if you actually tell them what's in it, especially on the IRS provision, it becomes very unpopular with likely voters, not just Republican voters, voters on both sides of the aisle who don't trust these institutions or just don't like the idea that that's what they're going to be paying for with their taxpayer dollars. Do want to get to some foreign policy uh, uh just for a minute here, because we saw more news on the U.S. and Taiwan starting formal talks on an economic and trade initiative. Chinese Communist Party, they're already voiced their opposition to it. The Biden administration has been tough. It's sometimes it's hot, sometimes they're cold when it comes to Taiwan. What, what is your kind of take on this, the economic news? We also saw some more military action by the Chinese Communist Party. I think engaging in trade with Taiwan is fantastic. If the Biden administration is serious about putting together a formal trade agreement with the uh, uh, freedom-loving people of Taiwan, and this will increase commerce between our two countries. I think that is all to the good. I, I applaud them for that. I hope they're serious. I hope it's real. I hope they'll follow through on it. It's not just a press release. Uh, no, no one can argue with the fact that the people of Taiwan deserve to have the capacity to trade and engage in commerce with whoever they want. That'll make Americans wealthier. It'll make the people of Taiwan wealthier. And the Western world, those of us who love freedom, will be more secure as well. Secretary Pompeo, as always, we appreciate you joining the broadcast, former Secretary of State.